Hello, yes. I am BSSP Rajasekhar, Assistant Professor of Mathematics, Government Degree College for Women, Nalgonda. In today's class, we are going to discuss one of the most interesting topic, coordinate mapping. There are some prerequisites to understand these concepts. That is why, let us quickly recap the coordinate systems, unique representation theorem, coordinates of X related to basis, coordinates of X related to standard basis, which we have discussed in the previous class. Of course, we need to focus on the definition of basis and linear transformation also. Later, we move on to the concept of change of coordinate matrix. And then we move on to today's topic, coordinate mapping. In this class, it is proved that coordinate mapping is, a, is an isomorphism from a vector space V2, V on to Rn. Finally, we solve some of the problems related to coordinate mapping. So this is today's class plan. Let us first quickly go through some of the useful definitions, useful prerequisites for this class. Basis. We know that if H is a subspace of a vector space V, then an indexed set of vectors B is equal to set of B1, B2, and so on BP in V is a basis for H if two conditions are satisfied. One is B is linearly independent set and B spans H. That is H is equal to span of B1, B2, and so on B, which are the vectors in B. So if these two conditions, so B must be linearly independent and B must span H, then we can say that B is a basis for subspace H. If we can find a linearly independent set which can span the entire vector space V, then we can say that that set, that independent set is a basis for the vector space V. That is what written here. A basis of the vector space V is linearly independent set that spans V. So this is the definition of basis, which we have seen in earlier classes. And let us recall the definition of linear transformation also. So a linear transformation T from a vector space V into a, into a vector space W is a rule that assigns to each vector X in V a unique vector T of X in W such that here also we have two properties T of U plus V is equal to T of U plus T of V for all U V belongs to V and T of CU is equal to C times T of U for all u belongs to v and all scalars c so a, basically a linear transformation is a function from one vector space to another vector space with these two rules with these two additional rules p of u plus v is equal to t of u plus t of v and t of cu is equal to c times t of u so if these two two rules are satisfied by a function between two vector spaces, then we can say that it is a linear transformation. And unique representation theorem, which is very useful in determining coordinate system. Let us recall the statement. Let B is equal to set of B1, P2, and so on Bn be a basis for a vector space V, then for each X in V, there exists a unique set of scalars C1, C2, and so on Cn such that X is equal to C1, B1 plus C2, B2, and so on plus Cn, Bn. 
So whenever V is a basis of a vector space V, we can write the vectors in V as a linear combination of vectors in V. That is, whenever X is a vector in V, X can be represented as a linear combination of V1, V2, and so on, Vn, where, B, where these are the vectors of a basis. So, uh, it is a unique representation. We can write it in, in a unique manner. So, you will find unique C1, C2, and so on, Cn. Unique, C, unique scalars for each vector with respect to some particular basis. That is the unique representation theorem. So, using this theorem, those unique scalars uh, can be formed the can be formed as a matrix column matrix that will be b coordinates these the c1 c2 and so on c and b the uh, coordinates and that will be the coordinate matrix that is the point described here coordinates of x relative to basis b or we can say that b coordinates of x Suppose B is equal to B1, B2, and so on. Bn is a basis for a vector space B, and X is an element of B. The coordinates of X relative to basis B are the weights, are the unique weights which we have seen in the earlier slide C1, C2, and so on, Cn, such that X is equal to C1, B1, plus C2, B2, plus so on, plus Cn. So these unique scalars are weights are called the coordinates of x if these are arranged in a matrix form in a column matrix form like this if c1 c2 and so on cn are b coordinates of x then the vector in rn xb we denote this by xb and call it as coordinate vector of x relative to b or simply b coordinate vector of x so b coordinate of x will be column matrix C1, C2, and so on, Cn, with, formed with the unique scalars, which are in the linear combination of X. So this is the coordinate vector of X relative to B, or B coordinate vector of X, and the mapping from X to XB. X is a vector, XB is the corresponding Rn vector. That is coordinate vector of X relative to B. So if, if a mapping is defined from X to XB, that is called as coordinate mapping, which we are going to discuss today in detail. And here we have to note that the order of the vectors in B must not change in the once the process starts. So that order should be preserved so that there will be no confusion once the coordinates are fixed. We have discussed about the coordinates of x related to standard basis also. So with, with an example, if x is 1, 6, and the coordinates of x related to the standard basis E, that is E1, E2, uh, this is a 2 by 1 matrix. So E1 will be 1, 0, and E2 is 0, 1. So this can be written as 1, 6 is equal to 1 into E1 plus 6 into E2. So the coordinates will be again 1 and 6 only. So Xe is nothing but X where E is the standard basis. So change of coordinate matrix. Uh, this is a new concept. So let Pb is equal to matrix of B1, B2, and so on, Bn. Where B1, B2, Bn are the vectors of the basis. 
then the vector equation x is equal to c1 b1 plus c2 b2 and so on c n b n is equivalent to x is equal to p b x b so if you multiply this p b which is nothing but a matrix formed using the vectors of the basis with b coordinates of x then you will get the matrix x in the previous class we have seen the numerical examples using excel so that is formulated here so we call this pp which is the matrix of b1 b2 and so on bn where these are the vectors of the basis it is called as change of coordinate matrix it is the change of coordinate matrix so if you multiply with this matrix the coordinate matrix will be converted into the coordinates of a matrix of a, of a vector will be converted into original vector Oops. so these will convert to b2 standard basis or this is called as pb the change of coordinate matrix from b to the standard basis in r left to multiplication of pb transforms the coordinate vector xb into x so if you multiply with pb and xb you will get the vector x since the columns of pb forms a basis for rn pb is invertible by invertible matrix theorem so whenever the columns of pb of a matrix form a basis we have seen the matrix inverse invertible theorem in which several statements are equivalent so these two are these two statements are also there so if you get any one of the statement is true then all the remaining statements are true so if pb forms a basis for rn then pb must be invertible whenever pb must be invertible i can find pb inverse so x is equal to pb xb implies i am multiplying with pb inverse on both sides i am left to multiplying this so i am taking this on the left side of the equation so pb inverse x is equal to pb inverse pb x so by associativity we can exchange the brackets and pb inverse pb is i identity matrix and if you multiply the matrix with identity matrix it will give you the matrix which you have multiplied with i so it is xb so finally pb inverse x is equal to x so if pb is given and x is given to find xb you have to find out the inverse of pb and you have to multiply left to multiply it with x so that you can get x this is another way of getting coordinates of x with respect to basis b so left to multiplication by pb inverse converts x into its b coordinates its b coordinate vector xb and left to multiplication of pb transforms the coordinate vector xb into x so whenever you you, you got a basis you can form a matrix using the vectors of basis that matrix is called as change of coordinate matrix from b to standard basis rn 
so you can form pb using the vectors in the basis if you left multiply pb with xb you will get x if you find whenever pb is found pb is formed pb is always invertible since this forms a basis for rn so pb inverse exists so if you, once you can find pb inverse left multiplication of pb inverse with x gives you xb b coordinate vector of x the coordinate mapping let b is equal to set of b1 b2 and so on bn be a basis for a vector space v then the coordinate mapping from x to xb is a one to one linear transformation from v on to r this is the statement of the theorem so now we are going to prove that the mapping coordinate mapping x to xb is 1 1 and it is on to and it is a linear transformation these are all to be true so first let us name the transformation given that v is a vector space and b is equal to b1 b2 and so on bn be a basis for a vector space v it is the given hypothesis let let us take two elements in the vector space v let u and v belongs to v so since u v belongs to the vector space v and uh, b is equal to b1 b2 and so on bn is a basis these two elements can be represented as a linear combination of the vectors in the basis so u is equal to c1 b1 plus c2 b2 and so on cn bn for some scalars c1 c2 and so on cn and similarly v can be represented as v is equal to d1 b1 plus d2 b2 and so on dn bn for some other scalars d1 b2 and so on dn since b1 b2 bn and so on bn is the basis v of the vector space v so let the coordinate mapping x to x b is denoted by t for convenience instead of saying every time coordinate mapping x to x b let us name it as t t from v to rn so the domain is the vector space v and the codomain is rn another vector space such that it is you know it is defined as quartet mapping the properties of this mapping is given here t of u is equal to ub b coordinate vector of u so it is nothing but it's a matrix column matrix of c1 c2 and so on cn where c1 c2 and so on cn are the unique weights which are used in the combination linear combination of u so the coordinate mapping is defined like this t of u is equal to b co coordinate vector of u that is a column matrix c1 c2 and so on cn so let us now prove that this t the coordinate mapping from x to xb is a linear transformation first so to prove t is a linear transformation we have to prove two things one t of u plus v is equal to t of u plus t of v that is the first one and the second one is t of cu is equal to c times t of u so for that let us take u plus v we know that u plus v is equal to this is u c1 b1 plus c2 b2 plus so on plus c n b n and this is v that is equal to d1 b1 plus d2 b2 and so on d n b n so if you add these two you will get c1 plus d1 b1 
plus C2 plus D2, B2, and so on, plus Cn plus Dn, Bn. So these B1, B2, Bn are the vectors of the basis of V. This C1 plus D1 is a scalar. A scalar is added to another scalar. You will get another new scalar. Similarly, C2 plus C2, D2 is a, another scalar. And Cn, Dn, Cn plus Dn is another scalar. These are new scalars, of course. So now, T of U plus V can be written as, as per the definition, this is B coordinate vector of U plus V. B coordinate vector of U plus V. B coordinate vector of U plus V is nothing but the, the weights, the unique weights used in this relation, maintaining the same order. So C1 plus D1, that is the first, first row entry. C2 plus D2 is the second entry and so on. Cn plus Dn will be the nth row entry in this column matrix. So this is the coordinate vector with respect to B. Coordinate vector of U plus V with respect to B. So now it is a column mat matrix. So this can be written as, so this is summarized here. This can be written as C1 plus C1, C2 and so on Cn plus D1, D2 and so on Dn. So the, these two entries can be separated by forming two separate matrices. So now the first one is nothing but UB, that is B coordinate vector of U. And the second column matrix is VB, that is B coordinate vector of V. So this is equal to T of U and this is equal to T of V as per our definition of T. So now T of U plus V is equal to T of U plus T of V, which is the first property of a linear transformation. Thus the coordinate mapping preserves addition. So let us do the second property, preservation of scalar multiplication. So let R be any scalar, then RU is equal to R times U. U is C1, B1 plus C2, B2 and so on, C and B1. That is equal to, you can, this is R is a scalar and C1 is also a scalar. So you can multiply each term with this R. So this is R, C1, B1. B1 is a vector and R, C1 is a scalar. R C1 B1 plus R C2 B2 and so on R C N B N. So now T of R U, R U is a new vector, and I am taking the value of T of R U. So T of R U is equal to, as per our definition, this is R U B. That is B coordinates of B coordinates of RU, the new vector RU. Those are the weights, the unique weights of the above relation. So RC1 in the first row, RC2 in the second row, and so on, RCN in the nth row. So now it is a column matrix. You can take R as common. So that can be written as R times C1, C2, and so on, Cn. This is equal to R times UB, B coordinate vector of U. That is equal to R times UB is the T of U, as per our definition. So R times T. Now we proved that T of RU is equal to R times T of U, where R is any scalar. So we can say that the coordinate mapping preserves scalar multiplication.
So as both the conditions of a linear transformation are satisfied, therefore coordinate mapping T from V to Rn is a linear transformation. So it is a linear transformation. Now let us prove that T from V to Rn is 1, 1. To prove any function 1, 1, we prove some T of x is equal to T of y. Finally, that implies x is equal to y. Uh, this is the method we take to prove the 1, 1 function. So let us assume that T of u is equal to T of u. As u and v are our vectors in our vector space v. So T of u is equal to T of v. This implies T of u is nothing but ub, b coordinate vector of u. And T of v is vb, b coordinate vectors of v. That implies so ub is c1, c2, and so on, cn. Since U is a linear combination of vectors b1, b2, and so on, bn with these weights, with these unique weights. Similarly, vb is it's a matrix of d1, d2, and so on, bn. So since ub is equal to vb, these two column matrices are equal. So Two matrices are equal only when all the relevant columns, all the relevant uh, elements are equal. So C1 is equal to D1, C2 is equal to C, D2, and so on. Cn is equal to Dn. This can be simplified as Ci is equal to Dn. For I is equal to 1, 2, and so on, yeah. So each and every entry, every scalar is equal. So u is equal to c1, b1, plus c2, b2, and so on, plus cn, bn. All these weights are scalars can be replaced with d, d1, d2, and so on, dn. So c1 is replaced with d1, d, c2 is replaced with d2, and so on, cn is replaced with dn. This is nothing but v. So as we have taken that, V is this one only, D1, B1, plus D2, B2, and so on, P and B. So whenever you assume that P of U is equal to D of V, finally you will get U is equal to V. This is the property of 1, 1 function. So we can say that the coordinate mapping T is 1, 1. Now let us prove that coordinate mapping T from V to Rn is R2. To prove this, let us take an element in Rn and prove that some vector of V is associated with that vector of Rn with the mapping T. So let us take one element in Rn, let it be y, let y belongs to Rn. Any vector in Rn will be of the form of a column matrix. So y is equal to y1, y2, and so on, yn, the column matrix, where y1, y2, and so on, yn are real numbers. Then y1 b1 plus y2 b2 and so on y n b n. This will be a linear combination of vectors b1 b2 and so on b n of the basis of b. So since v is a vector space, the linear combination of some of the vectors of it is again in v. So this linear combination is also 
a vector of v. So it belongs to let let us name it as w. W is a new vector in v, which is represented by this linear combination. Let w is equal to y1 v1 plus y2 v2 and so on y and v1. Then T of W is equal to as per our definition of T, this this is WB. That is B coordinate vector of W. So since the weights are y1, y2, and so on, yn, that is equal to column matrix y1, y2, and so on, yn. This is nothing but y, the column vector in R. So T W, T of W is equal to y. So now I can find a vector W in V such that T W is equal to y. Since y is chosen arbitrarily, We can conclude that for each y in Rn, there exists a vector w in V such that T of W is equal to B coordinate vector of W that is equal to y. So from this, I can say that T, the coordinate mapping, is on to. So we have proved that T is a linear transformation and it is 1, 1 and on to. T is here our coordinate mapping from X to XB, that is B coordinate vector of X. So the coordinate mapping X to XB is 1, 1 linear transformation from V on to R. So if a function, here particularly a linear transformation, if it is 1, 1 and on 2, we can say that it is an isomorphism. So a 1 to 1 linear transformation from a vector space V onto a vector space W is called an isomorphism from V onto W. So as we have proved that, Coordinate mapping is a linear transformation, a 1 to 1 function and on to function. So coordinate mapping is a is an isomorphism. Isomorphism from V, from a vector space V onto R. So this is the form of isomorphism. So we can see some interesting applications of this coordinate mapping. Let V be a vector space of some objects. So these objects may be signals, chemicals, or anything. Objects, some objects. Of course, we are calling them as vectors. So our previous theorem states that your coordinate mapping is isomorphism. It's an isomorphism, which is 1, 1, and on 2. It is a linear transformation, 1, 1, and on. So we can establish an isomorphism from the vector space V onto R. Similarly, W is another vector space of some other actions. And since it is an isomorphism, you can you can construct a inverse also, inverse operation also, since it is 1, 1 and on. So, if you can establish a relation between V to R and 
and another relation between R and to W. And these two are two vector spaces R and an R and you can easily connect with any, any function or any transformation, linear transformation. So one vector space may be connected to another vector space. using some linear transformations. So the actions in the original vector space is, is replicated, is are reflected in the RN space. RN space is nothing but uh, the set of different elements of real numbers, which can be easily transmitted. So RN can be easily transmitted. To signals or uh, any communication channel. So any number can be converted into binary system. Once it is a binary system, your computers and signal person, everything can be uh, transmitted through light speed. So for example, if you have some some switches or signals here, and those if you are adding two switches or if you are operating two or more switches here, those are reflected in this RN with a linear transformation. That can be transferred to another system of RN which is connected with another vector space W. So the actions here in V can be replicated in somewhere in some other vector space also. So this coordinate mapping will be a bridge for such actions. So if you interpret, we can find many such actions provided that we need to construct vector spaces properly. So we need to properly establish what is vector addition, what is scalar multiplication, those terms are to be defined properly. It is simple in number systems, but when you are dealing with object signals, you have to properly define them. So when we are talking about coordinate mapping, uh, we have two vector spaces. In each vector space, we have 10 properties. So we can, we should have 20 properties in two spaces and linear transformation and it should be a linear transformation. So for that, for the linear transformation, you have two conditions. T of u plus v is equal to T of u plus T of v and T of c u is equal to c times T of u. So now it is 22 and you need to have a basis for the vector space. Whenever you got a basis, each term in the vector space can be a linear combination. So those, those weights, those unique weights will reflect in your coordinate mapping. So all these properties will be behind the coordinate mapping and these coordinate mappings will be 1, 1 and R2 also. So when it is a 1, 1 and R2 function, it is invertible also. So if we, if we interpret these to real life, real life applications, many things would be looked will be simplified in Rn. We can't establish relations in V that much easily as we can do in Rn. Since Rn is full of numbers and in the column matrices we can convert them into echelon forms and we can see the relation between the columns here easily. So those relations will also reflect here also that will be the advantage of these coordinate mappings. 
so let us look into some of those in the form of some numerical problems and here we are establishing a coordinate mapping between polynomial sets and rm let b be a standard basis of the space p3 of polynomials we know that if b is a standard basis b must be in this form set of 1 t t square and t cube any typical element p of p3 will be in this form p of t is equal to a naught plus a1 t plus a2 t square and a3 t cube since p is a linear combination of the standard basis vectors we can write the b coordinate vector of p as these coefficients unique coefficients a naught a1 a2 and a3 in the column vector so this coordinate mapping p from pb is an isomorphism from p3 to p3 on to r4 so here we have four four rows so it is it is an element of r4 so this coordinate mapping p from pb is an isomorphism from p3 to p3 on to so now we are establishing a relation between polynomial set and some rn code that means all the actions that happen in a polynomial set will reflect in rn and vice versa let us go through some more example with some numbers to understand this in detail So we use the coordinate vectors to verify that the polynomials 1 plus 2t square, 4 plus t plus 5t square plus 3 plus 2t are linearly dependent in pp. Let b is equal to 1t t square, the standard basis for p2. Let T denote the coordinate mapping from P2 to R3. Let us name it as T. That is T from P2 to R3 is defined such that P of U is equal to B coordinate vector of U. That is simply written as UB. Now let us let us find what is t u what is the t images of the given vectors p of 1 plus 2 t square is equal to 102 since here a naught is 1 the, the coefficient of 1 the coefficient of t is missing here that's why it is 0 the coefficient of t square is 2 so this is 102 Similarly, t of 4 plus t plus 5t square is 4, 1, and 5. And t of 3 plus 2t is 3, 2, 0. Since there is no t square term. So, Writing these vectors as column vectors of the matrix A So A can be written as Using those three T images 102 415 and 320 These three 
these three vectors are formed formed as a matrix field. So now by using elementary row operations, it, it, it change this one into an eclan form. So to find the linear dependence or independence, let us form an argument matrix for the equation AX is equal to O. That is AO is equal to this A and the last column is filled with all zeros. So this is our argument matrix AO. And this can be converted into a clan form. So to eliminate this two, I'm subtracting R3 with 2R1. So R3 goes to R3 minus 2R1, which will give you 0 here, 2 minus 2, 5 minus 8 is minus 3, 0 minus 6, 2 times it was 2 times. So it is 6, 0 minus 6, minus 6, 0. So here you can observe that this is minus 3 times of second row. So third row can be added with second row after multiplying with the 3 which will give you all zeros in the third row. Now it is in echelon form. It has only two pivot columns and two pivot positions, this one and this one. Only two pivot columns. So third column is a linear combination of these two preceding columns as we have seen earlier so columns of a are linearly dependent as the columns of a are linearly dependent the corresponding polynomials are also linearly dependent since coordinate mapping is an isomorphism. If we denote the columns of A by B1, B2 and B3, then we can observe that B3 is equal to 2B2 minus 5B1. B3 is equal to 2B2 minus 5B1. If you multiply this into this will equal to. If you multiply this with 2, we will get 8. 8 minus 5 is 3. So B3 is equal to 2B2 minus 5B1. That is what we have taken here. So the corresponding relation between the given polynomials is also B3 is 3 plus 2T. B3 is corresponding to the third vector. So the third vector is 3 plus 2t. 3 plus 2t is equal to 2 times 4 plus t plus 5t square minus 5 times 1 plus 2t square. So even if we can't observe the relation between these vectors, we can easily establish the relation between them by converting them into coordinate vectors. So here there are only three vectors. You can you can find the relation between these two, between these three after some exercise. But when there are a lot of vectors are there and you can't establish relations between them and easily. But when those numbers are converted, when those vectors are converted into numbers, you can easily form the matrix and you can convert the matrix into echelon form. In echelon form, you can find the relations between the columns. Those relations will be will reflect in the original vector space. So this is the advantage of quadrant mapping. 
let us quickly go through one more problem let v1 is equal to 362 v2 is equal to minus 1 0 1 and x is 3 12 7 and b is equal to set of v1 v2 then b is the basis for h that is span of v1 v2 determine if x is in h and if so find the coordinate vectors of x related to b so if x is in h uh, then we can form the following vector equation so if x is in h it will be a linear combination of these two vectors for some weight c1 c2 so c1 times v1 plus c2 times v2 is equal to x that is x is c1 v1 c2 v2 for some scalars c1 and c2 now we have to prove that there exists some scalars satisfying this equation. That is, we need to find C1 and C2. So this above relation can be formed into a matrix form like this. So to find those C1, C2, we prepared an augment matrix. This is V1 and this is V2 and this is X. So by row operations, we can simply convert this into this one, as we have seen it here. After performing elementary row operations, I can make these two zeros and this one also. So finally, we can form this echelon form. So now in this echelon form, there are only two pivot columns. From which you can simply see that this is C1 and this is C2. C1 is 2 and C3 is C2 is C1 is 2 and C2 is 3. So we can say that since this is consistent, further. We can observe that the, the last row contains all zeros. So it is consistent, consistent relation. If you get some number here, then it is inconsistent. Then you can say that X is not in H, it is not, since it is not consistent. But here, you get a relation, a consistent relation, which gives you specific answers for C1 and C2. So the values of C1, C2 form the coordinate vector for X. So that is true and true. Geometrically, you can see the situation here. So X is 2, 3. XB is 2, 3. Means this is, this is V1. So XB is 2, 3 means X is 2V1 plus 3V2. So here is our x, that is 2v1 plus 3v2. So this is v1. This is 2 times v1, that is 2v1. And this is v2, that is enhanced to 3 times. And our x is in the intersection of these two lines. x is equal to 2v1 plus 3v2. This is the geometrical representation of this one. So with this, I'm concluding today's class. Thank you for watching.